get a brony kind of representative. You know, it's a bit blasphemous having that here at this con, right? No, no, no. It's BronyCon. It's basically carrying the dead. Uh, ah, the, <laughs> carrying the weight of the dead behind you. Those you slaughtered. Yeah. I don't know where our staff is. Uh, well, officially the panel has started, so we're not... So technically, this is a sequel to the animation panel we had yesterday. Uh, has anybody here been there? Uh, the um... so you all missed out on the preview for missing out I showed. <laughs> missed out on the preview for missing out. I there's a sense of irony that is uh, too strong for me. So I guess to start off, we'll show a preview of the project that he's working on, uh, which is called Missing Out, and is a little bit of like a. 2D, 3D mashup done in Blender and Toon Boom. And I realized that I left it in my other flash drive that I forgot to transfer. So we're live. There we go. So it happens. So please, please be introduced to the opposite of a fan project disaster by us making a disaster of a fan. <laughs> well, you know, you balance things out. Yeah. Like priorities. Yeah. So, but I hope y'all are doing well today. Here we go. Uh, I'm gonna wear the bright version because this uh, projector is a bit dim. Do we have sound? No, we don't. I'm gonna have to go plug down the stand. Wait, no, it just muted. Oh, there we go. Check out if she's all right. standing. The door used to open this way, but the old librarian who lived here before me made it into a regular door. I didn't know that. Starlight! <laughs> I guess I screwed up. I wanted this to be perfect, and I couldn't get it right at all. It's not such a big deal. I'm sure the others will still appreciate it. Hey, I remember that photo. Princess Celestia wanted a nice picture of all of us she could frame in Canterlot, and... It 
it's not because you missed out on the memories of the tree. It's because you're missing on them, right? That's all. I'm gonna go get someone to turn this mic on. And I forgot to mention the credits for the preview, but the music is from Blue Brony. Uh, I don't remember if he has a, his concert tonight or if it was yesterday. Uh, he's part of uh, Coachella, so looks. Uh, so, what topic do you want to start with that we didn't talk about? Uh, oh, let's open up your list. Okay, so, mics are off for now, so I'm going to like kind of halfway yell so that y'all could hear. Um, I'm not going to call this panel what it's called in the itinerary there. So I will. Know, that's a long name. Yeah. I'm say I call it the production panel. <laughs> because production, uh, and specifically pre production, uh, it's something that is missing in a lot of pony projects um, and very, very needed to, I mean, you were here last night, weren't you? Uh, very, very needed to make sure that your project succeeds. Um, Pre-production, well, actually, I guess I could show a thing to kind of introduce pre-production and application if y'all would like to see. Uh, I believe some of y'all saw it last night, but would you like to see that? Okay. Go to my files. Uh, Harmony Con update cut. Okay, so it's gonna be loud. So this is a cut of an update video for my project, Dimensional Shift, a little game project. If y'all haven't heard about that, it's okay. Um, this will be my programmer. Well, not the not the lady. That's the AI. Don't worry about her. She's okay. Uh, but. This will be my programmer talking about pre-production. Um, you do not have the mic, so power is on the top. Oh, ah. And ah. Then, now you can hear yourself, right? Yes. OK, so this will be my programmer um, talking about it. And I hope that it gives you some introduction. So go ahead. Uh, do I reduce the volume a bit? No. Good. unit, your personal artificial assistant. Please wait while I calibrate your suit systems. All systems nominal. Did you need something? It's been a year since our last update. Well, get ready for a whole lot of updates.
Game design is a complex and new frontier in art and a science. For a team to successfully create a game that plays well, lots of planning is required. Our past two years have been spent in what's called pre-production. Here we write the story, make game design documents, draft our levels and bosses, design and test mechanics, and overall make a sturdy foundation for the game as a whole. Without the foundational structure of pre-production, things become disorganized. It's like trying to build a skyscraper with no plans. Sure, it's possible, but halfway through you can discover a fatal flaw in your design, and you'll either have to destroy the whole structure and start over properly, or freeze development altogether. A state that drives most teams into development hell. With pre-production, we avoid this, and are not ashamed to spend as much time as we need in it to get things done right. As for the game itself, it's currently in its alpha build. Mostly consisting of a set of test rooms with toys and mechanics to play with, it acts as a platform that allows us to make sure the game we're designing is not only a good one, but possible in execution. Things like level loading, persistent enemies, spinning horses, and that guy over there. He kind of just does his thing. Okay, so that, that was a part of an update video uh, that's released on YouTube if you go look up Valiant Studios. Um, but ultimately, what pre-production is, is the very, very important planning, brainstorming, writing, storyboarding phase of a project. Uh, you cannot immediately rush into making the final thing because you don't even know if you can do that. Um, like, for example, in Missing Out, what if Minty Root did not have the skills and knowledge to do the uh, projectile, the pro that's not a projectile, <laughs> but the, the projection tree um, with those with those lights, which I'm pretty sure you did that in what, Cycles? Uh, um, yeah, a mix of Cycles and Eevee, yeah, uh, so Eevee for the volume tricks. Bring that up while... I can actually show a bit of the behind the scenes for that scene. Um, and so it's important to have a pre-production phase for a project uh, and that doesn't mean that it's like there's going to be a time where it ends. It, it's, it's a little bit like a blurry line there, but you have a pre-production phase where you um, where you actually make sure that what you think you can do, you can actually do. And so it's I described it um, to a friend actually. It's it's like a safe it's like a it's a safe haven for you to experiment and to screw up uh, and then to plan accordingly without wasting a whole bunch of time, and in some cases, a whole bunch of money. Um, so, if you want to explain how you put some of this together. So, the big challenge was to figure out a way, because it works with a ray tracer, so I had to figure out a way to get the volumetrics to work with colors, because EV doesn't do uh, colored shadows with volumetrics, and to find a way to make it project on the surface as well with those colors. Uh, with, the ray, with the ray tracer, it's, all, it's pretty challenging, so I had to make a model that I ended up just rendering during the holidays on my laptop at my mom's house. Uh, I had lots of fun rendering it at the lowest resolution and it looks, it doesn't look very sharp, doesn't look like 4k uh, 60 fps that people brag about, but it was good enough for me to prove that if I kept going with that plan it will look like what I had in mind. So and then I could overlay it on top of the other render that I had with just the basic add uh, blending mode and it was all I needed to know that it would look good for the final project. If I can show another thing real uh, quick, I'm going to navigate. Okay, so another another example of this is uh, this, which it loads, you'll see it. Ah yes, that is a super advanced uh, enemy in our game or my game and it's just a wall crawler and you know what it's made out of a sphere or a half sphere with a face extruded on it because why waste a whole bunch of time and money making a model for that thing that we may not want um, when we can get like the base programming out of the way uh, with just something so basic so that's like the block out phase or in terms of animation the storyboarding phase um, that, that, like I said before, that is a safe space for you to experiment and to really, um, get out a lot of the kinks of your design without being scared of falling into what's called the sunken cost fallacy, which in this case, for these productions, 
is where you have spent a lot of time in something um, and, and a lot of, especially money on something to the point where you do not want to get rid of it, even if it's to the detriment of the project. Um, for example, a tragic example actually is a game called Ambient White. If you have ever heard of that, um, it fell into the it fell into bad pre-production and the sunken cost fallacy. Not only did they not plan their project properly uh, to the point where they were just kind of running in circles, adding stuff as they went, um, when they got to the point where they were like, you know, this is kind of a piece of garbage and it's not fun to play. Uh, they were unwilling to change it because they had spent so much time, by that time about four years, um, producing really high quality models and all these animations and, and all these voice lines. And that's why pre-production is so important because then you don't waste all that. And here's an example of that in an animation, which is just called the storyboarding phase. And it doesn't have to look pretty. In fact, most of the time it will look really, really stupid. But the point of it is to make sure that what you have in your head is translating well into reality. Because as we all know, as anyone who's ever tried to draw anything, whether you're an artist or not, knows what is in your head does not have perfect parity to what your hand can do uh, or what you can do on a computer. Um, and a lot of times we can imagine things in one way that really does not work out as we thought it could. Um, so. And you can clearly see here, like nothing just, uh, except the, uh, for example, the projector test here, I had to do it first because I needed to prove that it would work because the whole story relied on it. But everything else is just, just me tracing over vectors I found, just making the most bare bones of drawings, uh, or just drawing a 3D model that I had for another project. And it works, like, I can show it to people and say that's what it's supposed to be about, but think of it like good looking and... Uh... So that's about brainstorming and writing, which I, I, I didn't really mention, but writing is extremely important. Uh, mainly it's big bold in here, it says write stuff down, unlike me. Um, well, you did write slide, stuff okay, down. I wrote it down there. <laughs> I'm getting better at writing stuff down, but write stuff down because you will forget, or maybe I'll just forget because I'm a goldfish, but um, write stuff down because you will forget and projects take time. And man, it's, it's been what, two years since I've been doing this game project and you would not believe the times that I'd be like, oh crap, we completely forgot about this thing. This changes everything. <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing that we're in pre-production. Um, but also writing is very important as well. Um, now this isn't really about pre-production, uh, but it, it is a little bit. Graphics in the fandom are fancy. Um, it, we have proven that, that we can make nice looking animations. And even if your animation isn't nice looking, the writing is really what matters. If Pony didn't look like it did, um, as in My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, we'd all probably still watch it because the story was engaging and the characters were well written and it was well put together and thought out. Um, oh man, what's what's that? Uh, what's that really old animation? Dusk, not dusk, dusk dawn. Not dusk dawn. The, Double the, rainbow. No, no, no. Uh, is it Dust Dawn, the one with the really, really bad Flash animation? Freeze! I'm way too evil for that. Yes, that, that's garbage writing. Yep. Um, sorry if any of y'all here worked on Dust Dawn. Yeah. Um, but that... Critiques are important. Uh, it, yes. Critiques are important. Don't be afraid to share your writing. But writing is important. Um, don't... Don't be afraid to kill your darlings. Uh, in terms of like what you imagine and what you want to visualize in a story in favor of doing better storytelling. Um, Vince and Visions, which was here, uh, who was here yesterday, uh, who does The Fleeting Light, we had a really big talk last night after the panel about his writing. Uh, he is going and rewriting the entire project, um, even after it's been in uh, semi-development for about four years, um, because 
well, first of all, it's too big of a scope. Uh, second of all, he wasn't satisfied with the characters. Um, and that's okay. And you shouldn't be scared to rewrite it, even if it means delaying the project, because ultimately, something with good writing, it's like, it's like for video games, a, a game delayed is eventually good. A good game. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's just a, oh, I forgot the name. Shigeru uh, Yes. Uh, but a rushed game is, is bad never forever. good. Because it is an art. And art is hard. <laughs> You've got to give it some TLC. Um, so I kind of said a little bit about scope there. Um, scope is also important too. Minty Root is like a Chad over here. He's been doing this for a long time. So he has a lot of skills under his belt. You may not have those skills under your belt. You may not be able to create something that looks like that. Well, if it looks like that, yeah, you can. Well, <laughs> you may not even be able to do something like that. I can't do that. Uh, I can't draw a horse to save my life. I traced um, that one. Like, you can clearly see that it's traced. It's... I still can't draw a horse to save my life. <laughs> okay. Um, but, but you may not be able to do what you want to do. Uh, and so you, you need to bring down your vision or your scope into something that is physically capable for you to do or for you and a team. Um, though I, I put an asterisk on team because you need to have a team. You can't just expect that you're going to get a team because most likely you're not. Um, so because if you don't have a good scope, that will burn out, obviously, and that's not good, but... Well, one thing I recommend is not to start right away with your dream project because it will be soul crushing to see your one unique vision just tarnished by lack of scale. Uh, for example, the project I started with in the fandom was not really the dream project I had. It's just I found something to talk about with Derby Hooves and just ran with it. Uh, it was a good opportunity for, for me to learn. And when I look back at it, it doesn't feel like my dream was demolished so on we're going to skip software because you can use whatever software you want try to avoid flash is bad uh, well you can't use flash anymore yeah you gotta use adobe animate why would you pay that? why would you pay like a hundred dollars a month for that kind of garbage blender <laughs> but, it's free uh, or you could use toon boom and pay a lot more <laughs> unless you get the student license it's super cheap I think the premium version with you get the student license is twenty three dollars a month, which is nothing compared to the full price. That's a lot if you don't make money. Yeah. So, <laughs> which I know not everybody's here. Everybody here is all that fortunate, which is okay. Um, the thing is, is that uh, something that I'd like to communicate with all that scope and brainstorming and writing and that stuff takes time. Be patient with yourself. Uh, I have to be patient with myself because uh, nothing ever goes to plan. Nothing ever is exactly how you want it to be. Nothing ever looks as good as you want it to be. Nothing ever translates exactly like you want it to be. So it's okay to take time and have patience. Um, and that runs into something that I talked about last time, which was your public perception. And I said it wrong last time, so I'm going to try and rephrase it. Um, not this exactly, I said, you aren't beholden to your audience. Um, you should first and foremost be doing this animation or doing this project because you like to. Last time I said you should do it for you. Well, I don't do, I don't even do the projects for me. I do it because I love doing the projects and it helps other people and whatnot. And, you know, I like making people happy with, uh, with playing games, um, but don't be beholden to your audience to a point where you are making sacrifices or you are rushing things out, because that will only hurt your project and your motivation. Um, for example, that update video uh, that I put out. We, we announced that we were going to go into beta phase. 
um, and create a section of the game and release that. And I'm going to be honest. Uh, this is probably like a few people in this room. Like y'all are going to be the few people that know about this. Um, we stopped that primarily because the biggest motivation for that was public perception. Um, nobody really wanted to support our project because they didn't understand the value of pre-production uh, and blocking out, and they just wanted to see a lot of fancy graphics and fancy gameplay. Um, and if we actually were to capitulate to that, we would have wasted thousands and thousands of dollars doing that. Um, and a good reason we didn't is we went back into writing because we really needed to redo our writing. The writing is terrible. Um, and completely rewrote and redid the first level, which is what we were going to make a beta out of. And so now that's, that's not happening. Um, but had we fallen into that, and had we fallen into the same trap as other projects in the past, um, we would not be on the path to a better story and better production overall, which would make for a better game that would be more enjoyable to play. So, you know, be, be careful that, that you don't fall into that. Um, if I may devolve into, devolve that into a little bit of a tangent, any of y'all know I'm Shadow007? Yeah. She was our Twilight for this project, so. Uh, well, she's my best friend. She's going to kill me for saying this, but she, um, some of y'all may know that she came back into using her YouTube channel in the fandom, um, early 2021, um, posting a public update video and then posting a, um, how it should have ended video. She was scared to death. She was like, having anxiety attacks and throwing up and whatnot, she was really, really anxious about that because she thought that she was just a washed up piece of trash and that nobody cared about her anymore um, in that terms. And though that's, that she, she very much felt that that was the public perception. Uh, and that wasn't true. It was not true at all. In fact, a lot of people still loved her and they were glad to see her come back. Um, and and she was she was wrong, gratefully wrong, um, that what she thought was the public perception, because what you think is the public perception is not always it, it was not. Um, they actually didn't mind, and they weren't as harsh as she thought they were going to be, and that's a good thing. You don't so be careful when you think that they're they're going to be really harsh with you because most of the time they're not. I mean we're we're a pretty loving fan and supporting fan like that. So. Uh, you were talking about uh, voice acting. Should we talk about how to direct voice actors? Uh, yeah, just on a side note for voice acting, if you can, uh, just because it's a really good tip, don't, please don't um, go and do the type of voice acting where you like give them a line and say, hey, do this, and they go do it in the free demo. Do live recording. Um, get into them with a Discord call, have them have Audacity running in the background, and record their line. Um, you can do that within five, ten minutes, depending on how big the script is. Um, the perfect pair actually had all of its assets leaked. <laughs> had all of its uh, takes, its, its audio takes leaked as well, and I actually slapped those all together. It was about an hour and a half of takes, and they recorded the entire episode in one go. Uh, they didn't go over several days of production for that, for just the voice line. They recorded it all in one day with all the voice actors and actresses in one room, except for William Shatner and I forgot who played the mother. Um, I always forget. They, um, they had stand-ins for them, and they went re-recorded re them later. Um, I actually I remember back when I uh, was working on the Fall Sunset Shimmer, I couldn't get both VAs for Sunset and Celestia at the same time, so I acted at the, as the temp. So I was just, just giving the line to get a, a good reply, to get the right tone. And just having that instead of trying to just go back and forth, like, not like this, not like this, not like this, which is pretty draining when you're yeah. told that the fifth one is not the right one and you're just almost tempted to just get, go and say, fine, and yeah, you just, yeah. uh, um, just give up. When you do it, you may think that it's easier for them and, oh, you could do it on the right schedule. And, and of course, it's really this really matters for, for your scheduling as well. So if you just can't do it, that's fine. 
but if you can, I'd do it. Um, because uh, you, you do it once and you're not there to direct the person to say, oh, actually, I'd prefer you to say it like this or whatever. And if you try to communicate that in text, let me tell you, can you communicate how you talk in text? Not really. You can't really communicate your tone of voice unless you add an emoji to it. And even then, they have to have an assumption for that. Um, so the the actress is just sitting there being like, what the heck am I supposed to do? And then they, they do it. It's not right. And then they have to come back next week because they have other gigs that they have to record. And then that drags it out. It's a really bad idea. Just do it live. It'll take like an hour. And uh, if you're in a different time zone, it's pretty annoying that you might have to wake up at 4 a.m. Uh, one time. I had that with Celestia because any Chloe am, I think, is in the UK. Uh, but I had to do it, and it was worth every second of it. So, But um, sorry that this is a little bit bouncy, uh, but there's not really any succinct way. Uh, at least I think we, we, we prepared like this panel like couple minutes ago. <laughs> um, there's not really a succinct way to say this with that much or that little preparation. Um, but going into the people side of things, um, teams, having a team, um, it's important that you recognize what the purpose of a team is. Um, a team is not merely a workforce to, to do things uh, that you just can't do at the moment. Some people tend to think that that's what it is. Um, specifically, Ambient Wipe was kind of like that. The, the main guy just kind of did everything and then just brought other people on because he didn't have enough time to do everything, but he still like, had a really tight stranglehold on everything. Um, on Dimensional Shift, that's completely different. Uh, Arusel, the guy that you heard in that video, um, actually, he's, he's our lead game designer as well. Um, and, you know, he gets a lot of say in, in how it goes, because I don't know everything about game design. Um, I don't know everything about animation. I don't know everything about um, modeling. And, in fact, we had an entire thing. If you go watch that up update video, we had an entire thing uh, about updating our Twilight model's face, uh, which looked horrendous. Um, but... I was not a character artist, and I was unable to say, okay, you need to do this, and you need to do this, because I didn't know what to do. If I knew what to do, I'd be able to tell them. Um, that's why I needed a character artist. Uh, so we brought in a character artist and a 3D modeler uh, to go and do this stuff, and they did it, and they were able to work it out based off of me saying, uh, I think the nose looks a little bit weird. You know, that's okay. Uh, you don't have to know everything, um, and it's okay to depend on others and have, well, a team, and not just a workforce. Um, so that's very enthusiastic. <laughs> um, back to back bullet points on our side right now. Um, so, and, and with that comes respect of your team too. Um, they, they're human as well. They uh, even if you pay teammates, you know it's it's still going to take time to do things. Um, things are never really going to go on the time frame that you want it. We did like a little promo trailer to really get our, our our name out there, and that was supposed to take a month and took six months thanks to COVID. Um, things don't happen in your time frame, which is okay. Um, but ultimately, you know you, you got to come with it as you want to you want to make a project. Want to, you want to make this thing to, to entertain others um, and not just necessarily to make money like some people want to do. But you can do that. I do that. Um, showed us into like EA with like five, like Call of No, EA didn't do Call of Duty. Uh, Who did Call of Duty? Activision? EA did Battle. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. One of those like guys. A million, same yeah. format, different texture. You know, uh, thing there. I'm kind of running out of things to talk about. <laughs> well, what else? Uh, nothing else really. Just yeah, that would be all recovered. Yeah, just oh, uh, editing while in the middle of the production. 
Um, if you look at that version of the build, uh, actually, it's, uh, I'm going to go with the uh, later version because all of those builds here are, uh, actually, I timed them with the, with the number, which I think 35 should be a more recent one. I'm going to mute it just to give you a good idea. By the way, how many of y'all uh, own any type of editing software? Like, it, who wants to do this stuff? Like, what, what do you have? Well, I think I have, like, Adobe Premiere, After Effects. After Effects, yeah. Adobe Premiere. Uh, yeah, they're pretty common stuff. Um, Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> I have I have literally made uh, block outs for videos in Windows Movie Maker. It's OK. You don't need some super highly expensive software to do it, at least initially. PowerPoint. Uh, PowerPoint, too, man. Is that the recent enough version? Uh, yeah, I think that's... What is, what is pointless, though, is that, like, it's it's okay to to actually put together the pieces, and, in fact, it is important to put together the pieces um, as, as you're going instead of just kind of waiting to throw it all in there. Uh, because just like with doing a storyboard um, where you kind of have to... Or the, the purpose of the storyboard is to really time and figure out your pacing. Um, this makes sure that the, the renders that you are doing are fitting with the structure um, and are working together uh, how you want them to. And you're going to think, well, if I'm editing stuff that is not even done, am I wasting my time with that? As it, as it turns out, no. Uh, all you need to do is just uh, swap the, the clips that you have with the fully rendered ones at the end, which is pretty easy. It's mostly just drag and drop. And it doesn't take time uh, away from the project. You have something you can show to people to prove that the project is going. And uh, also, if you do that while uh, in production, instead of uh, because I did a mistake where I just start making my clips, and uh, then once everything was done, I just put them together and realized that the pacing was kind of off. Um, but just having that kind of grasp on what the full scale of the project is right as you're working on it is so much more rewarding. It also gives you that feel that the project is actually going, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, because it, it, when you, especially when you see it like kind of falling together, right? Um, you know, it's like when you, when you build a, a Lego thing, following the instructions, it's actually starting to come together. You didn't know why you had to do this part, but it actually <laughs> makes sense now. Um, There's a lot of work, but uh, same thing with the, the little the little femur thing that I showed you. It's like a little hemisphere thing crawling on the wall. Um, that That is a similar situation where you make a block out um, and you put it together just to make sure it works. Um, make sure it's possible. Make sure it all fits together. But, um, I mean, outside of that, just the miscellaneous tips here. Just It's okay to render in the middle of the night. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, do we not can. switch software yeah. mid project. That is a retarded idea, a stupid idea. I did that. Um, uh, Vincent did that and completely renders yeah. broken <laughs> because your software, as good as it is, and forgive me for using the R word, sorry, uh, but your, your software is as is, is nice as it is and as is, is much upgrades as you think you're going to have. There's stuff under the hood that you don't know change, especially when software is first released, like when Blender 3.0 first released, garbage. Uh, because you have to realize that though they may have done a lot of testing on the software, uh, the best testing is when people are using it out in the field. So you may want to wait like a few months uh, before all those bugs are out of there. Sometimes it's the opposite. They fix a bug and you didn't realize that you used that bug to make it work, so fixing it was the opposite of what you wanted. Um, I yeah, I think the only exception to that is Flash, but that's because it never update anything of Word. It's been the same thing since 1993. Oh, well, actually, no, see if you update now, you get Adobe Animate, you can't open it in Flash. Probably. Oh, you can. <laughs> the, actually, the, the only difference between Animate and Flash is the name. It's still a .fla file. And that's it. They just changed the branding because Flash had such a stigma. And they just went with the most generic name ever. You're thinking that and you're thinking, well, why? You know, it, I I animated my thing in Animate. It's uh, yeah, someone who's hey, well, what least, the hell is this? It, at least it's not Apple Procreate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know. That's, that's uh, they could have chosen. <laughs> Uh, but, I don't know. But uh, yeah, nah. You can you can use whatever software you want. Even MS Paint, man. I made some of my first animations in uh in, in MS Paint and uh, PowerPoint. Oh but, yeah, PowerPoint. Uh, we had a trick with uh, when you had a slide that was timed to zero seconds, it would go as fast as it could. And since computers were really slow at the time, it was roughly enough for making an animation. So you'd basically just make uh, simple shapes and just move frame by frame, and just the easiest found, way you found, just it's the most fun we had. So, with all that information being thrown out into the open, a little bit disorganized. Sorry, we sorry we didn't put it in like a like a waffle style and just kind of pour the syrup all over the pancake. Um, <laughs> questions? Do you have any questions about anything? Yes. Yes. How did you find someone to help you with the character designs? How did we find someone to help us with the character designs? Uh, Ali Chan was the one that did the character designs. Would you Would you like to see some of that? I'm um, trying to make armor. Very good ooh, you're armor. trying to make armor. Well, I know a guy who can make some really good armor. If <laughs> If you. It's, the armor I'm trying to do is like most different kind of armor. You can reuse them so many times because you have to spray different paint. You're like, oh, that's a different person. See, I well, I actually know, um, I actually know someone who who does do, they do 3D armor or 2D armor? 3D armor for a pony. Uh, I know a guy who does that. If you are willing to commission. Well, you can come talk to me, and I'll, I'll give you his contact. Um, but how did we find him? Uh, networking, uh, and is. Uh, Mystical as that sounds, uh, it's it's merely just um, I I I wanted I needed someone. Uh, we we had had our project out there already, um, so there's already someone there. I, I kind of said, oh, okay, look, we need someone to do character art. Just, Ali Chan came to me uh, for Snecky. I actually found uh, which is the guy that I'm talking about. I found Snecky on uh, Derpy Brew, which uh, DerpyBrew.org. Uh, it's it's like one of the biggest fandom sites uh, in terms of content because it's all like pictures and it's all sorted with really really nice and detailed tags. Um, so if you can learn to use the tagging system, like search 3D comma uh, minus anthro comma <laughs> minus SFM, uh, <laughs> so you don't get garbage. Uh, you can get a lot of good 3D art, like from DJ the D or uh, an Die Anon Die is his name. A really good artist. Um, and Snacky and others, you'll find that there's a lot of people out there and you can contact them through Derby Brew. Um, but it's just going and looking around, not being scared to look, and not being scared to ask either. It's okay to ask. Rejection uh, is tragic and scary, but it's, it's not scary. I mean, it's okay. the worst they can say is no. Yeah, exactly. Or block you, but. Uh... Yeah. The, the worst they can say is no, and then you just gotta search again. Uh, which depends on your, you know depends on your project. That's why pre-production, I would say, is important um, because if you can show that your project at least has some type of skeletal structure underneath it, people are going to be a lot more willing to uh, to come on your project versus saying, "I'm doing an animation about my OC who's an alicorn," um, or "I'm doing and a video game about my alicorn OC who can teleport into different dimensions." Do you want to help me? No, <laughs> because it's going to fail and that's stereotypical. Well, that's we, what dimensional ship is. <laughs> we had uh, a case of someone who was basically begging us to animate his one hour and 30 minutes movie idea that he had. Uh, it was a bit too ambitious and it's also it was also a crossover. So it was mostly his passion project done by not him. So... You can clearly see how it's not very appealing for animators to mo make someone else's passion project. Um, this here, I'm just going to show this in the background. Uh, this is like, th this is just how bare bones you can get a game. This is the test room for, uh, for the game, um, which is literally just every single element that have, we've ever built inside a room. Um, and a sentinel. Wow. Um, but 
I, I just want to show this a little bit because it's okay if your stuff looks like this and like you've shown for the animation, it looks like that because as meaningless as all this looks, this is so much structure and there's so much underneath this that that actually um, is making a good game. It's just we're not going to waste a whole bunch of time right now to make a big block out level um, to, to, to do that when we can just well, do it like this. Um, so, any other questions? Oh. <laughs> do you have any questions? You're writing down a lot of notes. Okay, that, that, that's fair. Very that's good on writing notes. Uh, any questions? So we had all of our questions uh, yesterday. Ah, well. We answered a lot. Yeah, yeah okay. A lot of learning. <laughs> Let's say it. Editors for, for writing for the editors and stuff for writing. Um, editors for writing. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I don't really know much about that, but I'd say you'd probably want to go look on fan fiction because um, there are uh, a lot of times people who write uh, fan fictions will have editors listed in their um, in their uh, like in the description who edited the, the thing. So you you know just look on like go look at a high rated story and maybe check out the edit editor and see if they did a good job. You know? um, but you had a question back there. So you said, oh, uh, ba basically, so are you meaning like how to critique it or, or how to tell them like you're not right for the project? So you're not right for the project. Um, politely. Politely. Well, uh, if you want my honest answer, it's just, hey, you know, sorry, <laughs> sorry it took a while to get to you. I usually forget that. Um, thank you for your submission. Uh, we, uh, well. Either you say we've gone with someone else, or, or um, you know, you could be honest and give them a critique. It, it's it. Don't worry about necessarily hurting their feelings. Um, it's okay to say, look, you didn't really. Um, uh, this this isn't to the this isn't to the quality that we're looking for. Um, but we hope that you we we hope that you do find other opportunities. You know, to to get some practice. Uh, you did a very good job here. It's just not to the quality we're looking for. Yeah, it's, it's not really. Too many ways you can butter that up. Uh, you probably do it better than that. But what would you say? Well, sometimes it's not even uh, the question of quality. It's just that the actor is just more suited for another character. Uh, when we did uh, started recording the lines for uh, the characters and missing out, we found out well, I was with Time Shadow, and she was supposed originally to be also voicing Starlight Glimmer, and she tried and she struggled at it, and we realized well. I think we're gonna need someone else, and it was something mutual. We realized together that it was better for the project, it was better for her, because uh, not only because you wouldn't want, for example, to have a bad performance of yours in a project, be stuff like that. You would want the best of your performance to be shown. So I think it's mutually beneficial for, in this case, to just not take it and of course it's a bit sad when you you know you're very hyped you you really hope that your uh, your best role will go to you but it's not something that you should take personally because it's life it's and and, and it's it's better i would say it's better to tell them you know you, you didn't you didn't fit the role uh than to just not say anything um or yeah I'm saying I'm done that. Yeah. <laughs> I also had the problem, and I think it's just me who kind of didn't think of communicating more because I'm kind of shy. But and uh, yeah, go ahead. You were saying. Yeah. Um. Well. Yeah. So how? Just. 
ultimately started off with a thank you is, is really all I can say. I mean, there's not really any formula. It depends on the person. Uh, just I, I would just personally, I, I personally started off with a thank you for, uh, for taking the time to do this. Um, I, I also personally, for our, we give incentives for ours. You, know, you, you may not be able to do that, but we give incentives for ours. So like, even if you fail a test for Valiant Studios, you get like five bucks, you know. So you're not, you're not completely wasting your time. Uh, you can't do that for everything. But, but just to thank you, like thank you for your time um, and for doing this. You did really fit the role, um, but we hope that you can find something else. It's not, not personal. Go ahead. So you're saying when you do pre-production, is there a specific like method for like say doing a flowchart or, or like using a flowchart or using like a brainstorming document or stuff like that? Like what? What works for me? Uh, you don't want to know that answer because it's chaos. Uh, but what usually actually works is yes, doing flowcharts. Um, I think there's something called like a brain map, uh, which is used for brainstorming. I have not personally used those. Uh, I'm not I'm a little too formally educated, so. Um, Give me with that, but um, just uh, doing doing charts is really good for visuals. Uh, but also just writing stuff down. Um, sometimes you may just end up writing down like a, a document full of a bunch of ideas and a bunch of brainstorming stuff, and then go and sort it afterwards. Um, but ultimately, there is no real like concrete way to do it um, that I know of, at least for video games. For for Animations is a little bit different because it has a lot more, uh, a lot less complicated structure. Video games are extremely complicated with how the psychology of video games work. Um, yeah, well, in my case, the flow chart I would have is my editing timeline. So, um, and basically, I would just have pieces of shots that I have in mind just put together, I would have temp tracks of music that kind of sounds like what I have in mind and just put that there with some very basic uh, text that would uh, say what the characters say so I can have a rough idea in my head what it's supposed to be like and uh, it, it, sometimes I'll have a, a card that just says scene absent or and uh, remember there was one at uh, Babscon a few years ago, I had a card that said, scene missing, please pretend there's an epic fight scene. <laughs> and uh, I ended up just making a fancier version of that for Twitter. Oh, I should have I brought a little scribble animation that I did. I, I like pooped out an entire uh, music video in like an hour in, in really, really bad art. Um, that was mostly stick figure ponies. Uh, it's 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 okay to do that. It's okay to like. There's many ways to get your ideas out. Um, I would actually with that. I would say um, this is going to be a big word time. Be careful about reification uh, of your ideas, which is the, the which is like really making it concrete um, uh, and making it have a really defined border and whatnot at first. Uh, like for that music video idea I was talking about, I really didn't know uh, everything that I wanted to put into it, um, but I had generalized ideas, so I'd draw it down, but I wouldn't draw it down very specifically. Uh, and I'd move on to the next one very quickly, just to jot the essence of that idea down and then move on, because I didn't want to put too much into it that it became something that it wasn't, um, and and started to change, because when you start putting your ideas out there, they'll, they'll immediately start to change. Um, Especially if you start trying to make the final product, uh, because then you get so occupied with doing the the many things that it that it takes to do that uh, to make that product um, that you lose massive chunks of stuff that was just in your head and and now it's gone. Uh, unfortunately, that's why, like you said, writing stuff down is really important and getting that out. Something I need to do more of. <laughs> um, yes. Um, so, what do you think is the best place to look for casting call? Uh, casting call, I think. What, it's castingcall.net or something. There's a website called Casting Call. Um, there are, uh, 
if you're looking for Phantom voice actors specifically, uh, YouTube and their Twitter accounts and go talk to them. Uh, I'm Shadow takes commissions. Uh, I don't know how much y'all know Wubcake. She takes commissions. Um, plenty of uh, even even uh, Aurora, the one that played Fox, or no, no, that Fox, the one that played Aurora, <laughs> that one. Uh, she she takes commissions as well, um, and those are usually really small, like cents per line sometimes. Um, so, casting call is one place. Uh, just Twitter and YouTube as well, just around those 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 brony people. So. Uh, we got uh, here's the question. Where do I find motivation to keep on going? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, how do you? How do you find motivation? I don't need to work so. Okay. Just keep breathing. Yeah. Well, you are now breathing manually. <laughs> uh, but, um, I mean, we're, we're kind of out of time, but. But thank y'all for coming and, and listening. Uh, sorry, it's a bit rambly. This is my second panel I've ever hosted and ever been to. So, <laughs> so forgive me. It's a little bit disorganized. Um, I'm gonna blame him because I yes, I'm gonna it's blame you. entirely my fault. It's entirely one hundred percent your fault because uh, I, I decided uh, I was like, hey, can I do sound design for you for the, the thing? And I, I took two weeks doing that <laughs> and. Uh, um, and it was like Tuesday, like Tuesday a couple days ago before the end of it. And I started to do Vin sound work and, and then we were like, oh, I can't even do a PowerPoint for this. So, yeah. Well, the whole panel was supposed to be just word for, for word. Uh, another panel I did a few years ago and then I just realized, well, uh, it's not a bad idea. But then uh, when he came in, I just realized I can't show him his PowerPoint and tell him to say what I ask him to say. It's just not the right approach yeah sorry, so, sorry i took it over a little bit and i think it's it's okay i think uh, um, just talking about those things is very important and we already covered a lot uh, during the fan animation panel so Be, yeah if i may just in some closing words um it, it's pre-production is just really important so many uh games failed uh, and i say failed as in they have failed um because they have uh, Ashes of Equestria, Ambient Light. Um, I think uh, Star for Light was going down that route too, but their two lead devs left and it died. Um, and then there was, geez, what was that? Oh, what was it? It was a little MMO game. Um, the, the pony one. Legends of Equestria, I think, lacked pre production. Um, and that just made it where all of those projects kind of spun around in circles for many, many years and didn't really go anywhere. And that's unfortunate. Like, we haven't had a real finished pony game project outside of, like, Thin Spite and Herds, but is that even pony? You know, it's... Yeah. Um, and and it's because... It's, it's not because people are malicious. It's more because... You know, they get excited. They programmer programs a little beta, gets excited about it. Uh, the public gets excited about it, and they get to working on it. But they don't ever stop and say, "Look, actually, what do we even want to do here? What do we want to tell about these characters? What do we want this story to be about, or this gameplay to be about? How do we want it to feel? All those important questions." And they just kind of go with the flow. And when they get a little bit older, a couple of years down the line, they realize, "Well, actually, going with the flow was a really, really bad idea." And I have a piece of garbage in front of me that I don't want to uproot because that's several years of work. And so they go into development help and stop working on it. Yes. Huh? No, no, no. A, a, a finished, a finished full-scale uh, pony project. You say there, there have been plenty of demos and plenty of small games released, but like. Full, uh, full large scale uh, pony game projects have usually not been released. What are you thinking of? Uh, also, we're running out of time. Yes. Yep. Uh, we're we're out of time. So. Yep. So. We can uh, talk after this. 
We can still mingle. Yeah. But actually, I, I do. I do have a Starlight Glimmer panel afterwards, so uh, I'll, I'll uh, praise like her. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and I uh, hope you have a really good end of the convention. Thank y'all. Thank so. y'all for coming to this plan. <laughs>